Welcome to Disturbing Curiosity. I see your curiosity has brought you to the land of the disturbed. In this video, we'll be going over the top 10 most prolific serial killers in American history. If you enjoy content like this, don't forget to ring the bell and subscribe to the channel for more. Discussing the actions of serial killers can be disturbing, but it's essential to acknowledge historical events for educational purposes. Additionally, determining the worst serial killers can be subjective, as it depends on the criteria used, such as the number of victims, the brutality of the crimes, or the impact on society. Number 10. Albert Fish Albert Fish, born in 1870, was an American serial killer and child predator known for his heinous crimes. Albert Fish, originally named Hamilton Howard Fish, was born in Washington, D.C., and experienced a troubled childhood marked by an abusive upbringing and mental health issues. His early life included several traumatic incidents, including the death of his parents and his time spent in orphanages and mental institutions, but that doesn't justify causing harm to others in any fashion. Fish began his criminal activities as a child predator and later escalated to abduction, torture, and murder. He targeted young children, often choosing victims who were mentally or physically disabled, believing that they would be less likely to be missed. Fish committed a series of gruesome and sadistic crimes over several decades, with his criminal activities spanning from the 1920s to the 1930s. Fish claimed to have committed more than 100 murders. The exact number of his victims remains uncertain. His other confessions were often contradictory and lacked substantial evidence. Due to the lack of verifiable information and the sensational nature of Fish's claims, the confirmed number of victims is limited to the case for which he was convicted. One of his most notorious crimes involved the abduction, murder, and cannibalism of 10-year-old Grace Budd in 1928. Fish sent a letter to Grace's family detailing the horrifying event. Fish's criminal activities finally caught up with him when he was arrested in 1934 for the kidnapping and murder of Grace Budd. During the trial, Fish's defense attempted to use his history of mental illness to plead insanity, but he was found guilty and sentenced to death. Albert Fish was executed in the electric chair at Sing Sing Correctional Facility in 1936. His trial and subsequent execution were highly publicized, and Fish's crimes remain infamous for their extreme brutality and sadistic nature. Albert Fish's case stands as one of the most chilling examples of psychopathy and the depths of human depravity. His gruesome acts continue to be a disturbing part of criminal history, serving as a stark reminder of the capacity for extreme violence within the human psyche. Number 9. Dennis Rader, known as the BTK Killer, Bind, Torture, Kill, was an American serial killer who terrorized the Wichita, Kansas area for over three decades. Dennis Rader was born in 1945 in Kansas. He led a seemingly ordinary life, working various jobs and raising a family. He developed an early fascination with bondage control and sadomasochism. Rader's killing spree began in the 1970s, with 10 known victims between 1974 and 1991. His modus operandi involved binding, torturing, and killing his victims. He often left clues and communicated with the police and media to boast about his crimes. Rader taunted law enforcement and the public by sending letters and packages detailing his crimes. This included poems, drawings, and items taken from crime scenes. His communications with the police led to his nickname, the BTK Killer. After his last known murder in 1985, Raider went dormant for many years, and the case went cold. During this time, he continued to live a seemingly ordinary life. In 2004, Raider resumed communication with authorities, leading to his eventual capture. He sent a floppy disk containing metadata that was traced back to a computer at his church. In 2005, Raider pleaded guilty to 10 counts of first-degree murder. During his confession, he provided chilling details about his crimes and the motives behind them. In August 2005, he was sentenced to 10 consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. Dennis Rader is currently serving his life sentences at the El Dorado Correctional Facility in Kansas. 
Raider's case is notable for the calculated and sadistic nature of his crimes, as well as the extended period between his murders and eventual capture. His willingness to taunt authorities and the public added an extra layer of terror to the Wichita community for many years. Number 8. The son of Sam, David Berkowitz. He was an American serial killer who terrorized New York City in the mid-1970s. David Berkowitz was born in 1953 in Brooklyn, New York. He had a troubled childhood marked by feelings of rejection and issues with adoptive family relationships. Berkowitz joined the U.S. Army and served in South Korea. Between 1976 and 1977, Berkowitz committed a series of shootings in New York City, targeting young couples parked in cars. He taunted the police and the media with letters, leaving cryptic messages signed as the Son of Sam. Berkowitz was apprehended in August 1977 after a widespread manhunt. His capture was aided by the assistance of a parking ticket and eyewitness accounts. Berkowitz confessed to the shootings, claiming that he was commanded to kill by a demon that spoke through his neighbor's dog. <coughs> he later retracted his demon-inspired claims and explained that he acted out of a desire for notoriety and attention. In 1978, Berkowitz pleaded guilty to all charges, receiving six life sentences for his six murders. He expressed remorse for his crimes during the sentencing. Berkowitz later became a born-again Christian in prison, and he has since claimed to have found religion and remorse for his actions. But honestly, who is he really fooling? He is serving his sentence at the Shawangunk Correctional Facility in New York. David Berkowitz's case remains one of the most infamous in American criminal history. The randomness and fear he instilled in the public during his crime spree left a lasting impact on the city and led to changes in law enforcement practices. Number 7. Ed Gein Ed Gein was an American serial killer and grave robber, born in 1906 in La Crosse County, Wisconsin. Ed Gein grew up in an isolated farmhouse with his domineering and abusive mother, Augusta Gein. His father died when he was young, leaving him alone with his mother, who instilled a strong sense of religious fervor and fear in him. Gein's crimes became known in the 1950s when authorities discovered his gruesome activities. He was responsible for the murders of two women, Bernice Warden in 1957 and Mary Hogan in 1954. Gein also engaged in grave robbing, exhuming bodies from local cemeteries, and using human remains to make macabre artifacts. When investigators searched Gein's home, they found a house of horrors with furniture and clothing made from human skin, as well as other artifacts crafted from human body parts. Gein's activities in the state of his home shocked the nation and inspired several horror films, including Psycho and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Typical America. Gein was arrested in 1957 and declared mentally unfit to stand trial. He spent the rest of his life in mental institutions, but somehow he was mental fit enough to carry out and conceal those murders. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia and deemed legally insane, preventing him from facing a traditional criminal trial. How convenient. Ed Gaines' case played a significant role in inspiring fictional portrayals of psychotic killers in popular culture. While he was only convicted of two murders, his gruesome and disturbing acts left a lasting impact on the public perception of serial killers. Ed Gein's case is often cited as one of the most disturbing in criminal history due to the bizarre nature of his crimes and the macabre use of human remains in his home. Number 6. Aileen Warnos, the first and only female to make an appearance on this list, was an American serial killer who gained notoriety in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Aileen Warnos was born in Rochester, Michigan in 1956. She had a difficult childhood marked by abuse, abandonment, and involvement in criminal activities. She became pregnant at the age of 14 and gave birth to a boy who was later put up for adoption. Warnos began a life of crime in her teenage years, engaging in various offenses such as theft, forgery, and armed robbery. Her notoriety escalated in the late 1980s when she embarked on a killing spree along Florida's highways. Between 1989 and 1990, 
Hornos murdered seven men, whom she claimed had assaulted or attempted to assault her during her work as a sex worker. Hornos shot her victims at point-blank range and later robbed them. Hornos was arrested in 1991 after one of her victims' cars was discovered. Her arrest received extensive media coverage. During the trials, Warnos claimed that the murders were acts of self-defense against sexual assault. The defense argued that she suffered from mental health issues. Aileen Warnos was convicted of six murders and sentenced to death in 1992. Despite appeals and efforts to have her sentence commuted, Warnos was executed by lethal injection on October 9, 2002 at the Florida State Prison. Warnos's case sparked debates about the death penalty, mental health, and the impact of childhood trauma on criminal behavior. Her life has been the subject of documentaries, books, and films, including the movie Monster, for which Charlize Theron won an Academy Award for her portrayal of Warnos. Aileen Warnos remains one of the few female serial killers in American history, and her case continues to raise complex ethical and legal questions surrounding issues such as mental illness and the criminal justice system. Number 5. Richard Ramirez, also known as the Night Stalker, was an American serial killer and rapist who terrorized Southern California in the mid-1980s. Richard Ramirez was born in El Paso, Texas in 1960. He grew up in a troubled household marked by physical abuse. In 1984 and 1985, Ramirez embarked on a brutal crime spree in Southern California, primarily targeting residents of Los Angeles and San Francisco. His crimes included home invasions, sexual assaults, burglaries, and a series of gruesome murders. Ramirez targeted both men and women, breaking into homes at night. His crimes were characterized by extreme violence, including sexual assault, mutilation, and murder. Ramirez left satanic symbols at some crime scenes, adding an element of terror to his notoriety. Ramirez's crimes generated widespread fear, and the police launched an intense manhunt to apprehend him. He was finally identified and captured in 1985 after a group of residents in East Los Angeles recognized him and detained him until the police arrived. Richard Ramirez faced a highly publicized trial in 1989. He was charged with 13 counts of murder, 5 counts of attempted murder, 11 sexual assaults, and 14 burglaries. In 1989, Ramirez was convicted on all counts and sentenced to death. Ramirez spent over two decades on death row at San Quentin State Prison. He died of complications related to B-cell lymphoma on June 7, 2013 while still awaiting execution. Ramirez's crimes and his courtroom antics contributed to his notoriety, and he remains one of the most infamous American serial killers. Richard Ramirez's case shocked the nation, and his ruthless and seemingly random attacks created a climate of fear during his crime spree. The Night Stalker's legacy endures as a chilling chapter in the history of American crime. Number 4. Gary Ridgway also known as the Green River Killer, was an American serial killer who terrorized the Pacific Northwest, particularly the Seattle-Tacoma area, during the 1980s and 1990s. Gary Leon Ridgway was born in 1949 in Salt Lake City, Utah. He grew up in a troubled household with a domineering mother. Ridgway had a troubled adolescence and had difficulty forming relationships. Ridgway's killing spree began in the early 1980s, and he targeted vulnerable women, many of whom were sex workers or runaways. His modus operandi involved luring victims, strangling them, and dumping their bodies in wooded areas or along the Green River. Ridgway was active for several years, with his crimes reaching their peak in the 1980s. He killed numerous women and eluded law enforcement for years. His crimes earned him the moniker Green River Killer, due to the location where many of the victims' bodies were found. The case became one of the largest and most costly serial killer investigations in U.S. history. Ridgway was finally arrested in 2001 after advancements in DNA technology linked him to the crimes. In a plea bargain to avoid the death penalty, Ridgway confessed to the murders of 48 women, making him one of the most prolific serial killers in U.S. history. 
he was convicted of multiple counts of aggravated murder and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Gary Ridgway's case highlighted the challenges law enforcement faces in solving serial murder cases and the importance of advances in forensic technology. The Green River Killer's crimes had a profound impact on the communities affected, and his legacy remains a dark chapter in criminal history. Gary Ridgway's ability to elude authorities for an extended period and the scale of his crimes shocked the public. His eventual capture and confession marked the end of a long and painful chapter for the victim's families and the communities he terrorized. Number 3. Jeffrey Dahmer also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal or the Milwaukee Monster, was an American serial killer and sex offender. Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer was born in 1960 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. As a child, he showed an interest in dissecting animals. Dahmer's family life became strained, and he exhibited behavioral issues during his teenage years. Dahmer's killing spree began in 1978, with his first murder occurring when he was 18 years old. He primarily targeted young men, luring them to his home with the promise of money or alcohol. Dahmer's modus operandi involved drugging, strangling, and dismembering his victims. Dahmer's crimes escalated in brutality, involving necrophilia, cannibalism, and preservation of body parts. He used acid and other methods to dispose of his victims' remains. Dahmer's apartment became a house of horrors with evidence of his gruesome acts hidden in various containers. Dahmer's crimes went undetected for several years. However, in 1991, one of his intended victims managed to escape and led police to Dahmer's apartment. Upon entering Dahmer's home, authorities discovered evidence of his heinous crimes, including human remains. Dahmer was charged with 17 murders in Wisconsin. He pleaded guilty, but insane. In 1992, he was sentenced to 16 life terms in prison. While in prison, he was later sentenced to an additional life term in Ohio for an earlier murder. Dahmer was murdered by a fellow inmate in 1994 at the Columbia Correctional Institution in Portage, Wisconsin. Dahmer's case shocked the public, not only due to the brutality of his crimes, but also because of his ability to blend into society. His case raised questions about the mental health and criminal justice systems Jeffrey Dahmer's life and crimes remain infamous in the canals of criminal history, and his case has been the subject of numerous books, documentaries, and films examining the psyche of a serial killer. Number 2. John Wayne Gacy Also known as the Killer Clown, born in 1942, he was an American serial killer and sex offender who operated in the Chicago area during the 1970s. Gacy grew up in the suburbs of Chicago and had a troubled relationship with his father. He experienced bullying and struggled with his sexuality. Despite his personal struggles, Gacy appeared to be a successful businessman, managing a construction company and involving himself in community activities. Gacy's criminal activities began in the early 1970s. He lured young men to his home with promises of employment or money often using his clown persona for entertainment at children's parties. Gacy's modus operandi was to find vulnerable individuals, including runaways and those facing personal challenges. He sexually assaulted and murdered at least 33 teenage boys and young men between 1972 and 1978. Gacy would gain the trust of his victims, then incapacitate and eventually murder them. Gacy's crimes were exposed in 1978 when one of his intended victims managed to escape and reported him to the police. Law enforcement conducted a search of Gacy's home, uncovering evidence of his heinous acts, including human remains. In 1980, Gacy was convicted of 33 murders and sentenced to death. During the trial, he attempted to use an insanity defense, claiming multiple personalities, but the jury rejected this. Gacy spent over a decade on death row, filing numerous appeals. He was executed by lethal injection in 1994 at the Stateville Correctional Center in Illinois. John Wayne Gacy's case remains one of the most infamous in U.S. criminal history and the subject of many documentaries and movies, given the shocking nature of his crimes and the contrast between his public image 
and his dark actions. The case had a lasting impact on criminal investigations and the public's perception of seemingly ordinary individuals who could hide a sinister side. Number 1. Ted Bundy Bundy was an American serial killer who committed a series of heinous crimes during the 1970s. Theodore Robert Bundy was born in 1946 in Burlington, Vermont. He grew up in a middle-class family, and his early years appeared normal. Bundy was described as charming and charismatic, traits he later used to manipulate his victims. Bundy's killing spree began in the early 1970s. His victims were young women, often college students. He would approach victims feigning disabilities or using other ruses to gain their trust before assaulting and murdering them. Bundy's modus operandi was that he often used blunt objects to bludgeon or strangle his victims. After committing murder, he would revisit the crime scenes to engage in acts of necrophilia and further dispose of evidence. Bundy managed to elude law enforcement for years due to his transient lifestyle and ability to blend in. He was eventually arrested in 1978 when he was pulled over for a traffic violation, and evidence linking him to several murders was found in his car. Bundy faced multiple trials across several states. He often represented himself and used his charisma to manipulate the proceedings. During one of his trials, Bundy managed to escape from custody, leading to a nationwide manhunt. He was recaptured but escaped again later. Bundy was convicted of multiple murders and sentenced to death. He spent years on death row, appealing his convictions. Bundy was executed in the electric chair at Florida State Prison on January 24, 1989. Ted Bundy's case is infamous for the gruesome nature of his crimes and his ability to maintain a facade of normalcy. His story has been the subject of numerous books, documentaries, and films contributing to public fascination with the psychology of serial killers. Bundy's case is a chilling reminder of the dangers posed by individuals who can blend into society while harboring dark and predatory intentions. And there you have it, folks, the chilling tales of the top 10 serial killers in American history, which disturbed individual piqued your curiosity the most, whose story left you the most intrigued or shocked, let me know in the comments below. Lastly, if you have any suggestions for future topics, drop them down below as well. If you found this video both interesting and disturbing, you're in the right place. Make sure to ring that bell and subscribe to Disturbing Curiosity for more dark, disturbing and mysterious content. As always, thank you for watching till the end. Every new video is a new adventure into the land of the disturbed. Until then, stay safe and most importantly, stay curious, my friends.